Hi guys, so this is going to be a very short video, but today we're going to explain emic and etic concepts. So basically this linguist was like, there are phonetics and phonetics in language. So before I read about this, I did not know if the word phonetics existed. And when I tried to type it on Keynote, they did a spell check on me. So I don't know if this is a legit word, but apparently in the realm of psychology, this is a word. But anyways, phonetics is the study of languages that are particular to a specific language. And phonetics is the study of universal sounds that are used in all human languages. So this linguist named Pike, he was like, we can apply this to social behavior. There's things that, um, that are universal for all of us, like certain emotions. But there are also culture-specific aspects as well, like social norms, who we should value, and so on. And that's why the terms emic and etic were coined. So etic approaches seek to discover what everyone has in common. It uses cross-cultural tests and experiments, and it assumes that underlying psychological behavior are innately similar across different cultures. A research on depression was conducted by the World Health Organization where it looked at four countries, Switzerland, Canada, Japan, and Iran, to investigate symptoms of depression. The results showed that most people, 76%, had similar symptoms of sadness, joylessness, anxiety, and a sense of insufficiency. However, 40% displayed symptoms such as shut up, somatic complaints and obsessions, and it was evaluated that this was due to cultural factors, while others evaluated that some cultures are not likely to express guilt-related symptoms. Other cultures um, often report physical or somatic symptoms like pain. Like in China, they report a lot of symptoms like back pain and whatnot. Now, emic approaches are like the opposite of etic approaches. They look at one culture specifically. Emic approaches examine distinct behaviors across unique cultures, and this approach assumes that the meaning of behavior can only be defined from the perspective of the insiders, who are actually part of one the, the specific culture. In 1985, Manson et al. wanted to investigate how the American Indian Depression Scale came about, so they decided to interview Native informants, especially the Hopi people. The researchers came up with five translated Hopi illness categories, which are worry sickness, unhappiness, drunken like craziness, um, disappointment, and heartbroken. The Hopi participants said that they couldn't identify a word related to depression, but they could all relate to these five terms, like the five terms I said, worry sickness, unhappiness. Um, and while some characteristics were similar to the way Westerners diagnosed depression, others, such as the category of heartbroken, was totally different. Its symptoms included weight loss, disrupted sleep, fatigue, and so on, which we never see in the diagnosis of depression in Western culture, right? So yeah, this was my video, my short video on emic and etic concepts for IB Psych, before like AP Psych and other psych um, classes as well, or just for fun. <laughs> Um, after doing about 10 videos on this channel, like, I feel way more comfortable doing these kind of videos. So, yeah, I, I kind of cringe when I watch my old videos. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys in my next video. And if you guys are wondering why I'm making so many videos, like, this week, it's because it's, like, almost the end of my summer break. And it's going to be so busy soon. So that's why I'm making so many videos. So, yeah. Bye.